orbicularis oculi is a frequently selected muscle for uh, stimulation jitter uh, for two reasons actually. One is that uh, it is one of the most sensitive muscles uh, for the diagnosis of myasthenia and the second reason is that we have extensive normal material for this muscle regarding stimulation SFEMG. Now, um, the first step is to find proper position for the stimulating electrode, stimulating cathode actually. Now we uh, usually go as far distal as convenient. We could, for example, start uh, stimulate already uh, where the uh, facial nerve emerges, uh, but uh, then we get big contraction of maybe half of the face, which is not good. So we try to get small movements and the uh, usual advice is to palpate the zygomatic arch which runs like this and we shall uh, find a spot at which we can elicit uh, nice responses in the orbicularis oculi with a surface stimulus of a small intensity. So we could for example start here but this this is likely to be a coarse contraction of we see both lower and upper part of the face twitching. We do not wish to have this. So we go a little higher. Now it is only the upper part of the face. And then we go we reduce the stimulus and try to find a spot from which we can elicit small contractions more or less limited to the orbicularis oculi and it is important to to see that contractions involve the outer two quadrants of the of the muscle and right now I think this is a good position. We shall introduce the stimulating electrode while the stimulation is going on. We have determined that this stimulation site is convenient when we try it with the surface stimulation electrode we try to not blink. Now it is important to fix the electrode, the cable to the, to take the electrode to skin so that it does not fall out. Now we have uh, stimulation going on and we should try to introduce the single fiber needle and find some responses. Now we shall try to reduce the stimulus to about the threshold. You see where the threshold lies for the fibers that are responding. And it is really low, it is about one, one milliamp.
perhaps this second potential is also usable for measurement. Maybe we can superimpose some to see that the jit is slightly larger than yes than in the first spike. This is another recording position. I think we have some noise in the baseline, but still this can be used. Okay. We, yeah, we have a very late potential here with a normal jitter, which means that it does not belong to some F wave or to or to blink reflex. By the way blink reflex will not follow that high frequency but, uh, we can get it with 1 to 5 hertz but not beyond that well it would be interesting to see what happens if I move the skin a little does not change very much, maybe a little. The latency is going, is changing when I stretch the muscle fibers or the muscle actually or make it, make it slack. You could also see what happens when the frequency of stimulation is reduced. Now this is one hertz. And now we go to ten hertz, fifteen hertz, twenty hertz. Is actually shortened every time we increase the rate, and when we decrease it, it is it becomes longer again. So this is very easy to, to do, and this is considered one of the advantages of the simulation. Jitter study, we have perfect control over the stimulation rate, and if we say 10 hertz, we know that it is really constant discharge rate, which is sometimes not always, but sometimes it is difficult in voluntarily contracted muscle. We could perhaps see the effect of stimulus strength. If we go down with the stimulus strength, now we have reduced it to about one half of the previous, then now we are at the threshold. We go up. threshold is around 1 million. So if we go to 1.3, 1.4, 1 1.6, this will not influence the jitter at all. But when we are exactly at threshold, then we see an increased jitter when uh, we have intermittent force blocking and this situation must be carefully avoided whenever we see a muscle fiber which blocks we must be we must make sure that this is not due to insufficient stimulus okay 
So what was the jitter here that we could measure? Yeah, it was 40.2 microseconds. That was definitely outside the normal range. And now we shall try to stimulate again with the uh, supra threshold stimulus strength. And compute now. Oh, it was, it is just 13. So this is completely normal jitter, of course. This is the middle of the normal range. So this shows how important it is to keep the stimulus well above the threshold. What does it mean well above the threshold? Usually it is enough to go half a milliamp or one milliamp above the threshold value to be sure that we are uh, well supra threshold. Alternatively we could uh, go for example 20% or 30% above the threshold value, then we are quite uh, safely in the super threshold range and we do not uh, need to bother about the effect of stimulus upon the jitter.